Greetings, class. It's me, Bach. I apologize for not being with you these couple days, but believe me, I miss you. In here. I miss you in here. So here's the deal. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, everybody knows about cell phones. Today you're going to be talking about a couple engineering concepts. One's a, one is what's called designed obsolescence. Des designed obsolescence is kind of an interesting thing. As an engineer, you design stuff. You know everything about it. Every piece, every switch, every screen, you know everything about it. And the interesting thing about knowing everything about it, you also know when everything breaks, when the screen is going to crack, how much pressure it uh, takes for the screen to crack. You know when the battery is going to eventually die. You know everything about this product. Just like the shapes that you guys have been drawing and designing, you know every, every line about those shapes. I mean, we saw that in the uh, isometric challenge where people were just going nuts, drawing things almost from memory. When you design something, you know all about it. Design obsolescence is intentionally designing something to wear out or break. Now think about it. If you design something that lasts forever, forever and ever and ever, no one is ever going to need an additional product because it lasts forever. The problem with that is then companies don't make any money because they only sell one. Imagine if Apple made a phone so perfect that no one ever needed another phone, that it literally lasted forever. You could upgrade it, you could change it, you could do whatever. Design obsolescence, excuse me, the light went off. Design obsolescence is where companies intentionally design their products to break at a specified time. Uh, think about a car. A car has a 36,000 mile warranty and then things break right after that warranty and people, oh, what the heck, my warranty just expired and this stuff broke. Yeah, that's intentional. That's called design obsolescence. It's designed to break right after that stuff. Now, there is two schools of thought with this design obsolescence thing. One is design obsolescence is necessary in that if we designed and built perfect products that people would only buy things once and the economy wouldn't grow nearly as fast as it has been. So there's a money issue. Now the other school of thought is that's kind of awful because you're intentionally designing things to break. So here's your assignment for today. There's two videos that are going to be talking about phones. Uh, you're going to be watching these. And at the end of these videos, I want to know sort of your take on it. I'm going to give you your assignment. Uh, the first one, first video, talks about Apple and do they intentionally design their phones to break. Check that out. It's kind of a cool concept. The second video is where a phone could be completely modular, meaning when one part breaks or when you want to upgrade, you could just upgrade that part. It's a really interesting concept. So I want you to check out both of these videos. Uh, watch through them on your screen, um, preferably wearing headphones because, you know, this gets a bit loud. And I will visit you about 10 minutes from now. Okay, peace out. New York Times says that just maybe, maybe Apple might have planned that sluggishness and shortened battery life on your aging elderly iPhone. It could be timing it so you're forced to get a new one. You have wondered this, haven't you? Catherine Rempel wrote that column. She is an economics reporter for the New York Times. This is kind of a bold suggestion and I kind of appreciate you <laughs> We're putting something on paper that I think many of us have wondered about, a suspicion. Yeah, I mean, certainly I've gotten a lot of emails from readers, um, well, both pro and con, but, but many of which have said, I've been wondering about this, I thought it was my imagination. So what is your theory? So um, my theory is that yes, um, phones do seem to slow down around the time that a new operating system comes out, um, and it's ambiguous about whether Apple plans it deliberately. That is, the new operating system, new software that comes out is, is designed with the capabilities of the new hardware in mind, um, which it has a faster processor, which can do a lot more fancy things, and it just 
It could be that it so happens that that happens to slow down the older phones. So it's, it's ambiguous. It's very hard to infer motive is what I'm saying. You know, you can, you can have a lot of conspiracy theories about whether Apple is doing this deliberately. But it could be benign as well. It could be benign. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not going to upset a lot of consumers <laughs> and encourage them to upgrade. The question is, you know, is Apple even incentivized, basically, to make you want to throw away your old phone and buy a new one? And again, you know, you could, call, you could kind of read that situation mo both ways. Could you? Because it kind of seems like well, <laughs> So, so if, so like I said, I, I write about economics, um, and economic economists would say that if you're a monopoly and if you don't face any sort of competition, yes, this is what you want to do. You want to force people to junk their old phones so that so that you can harvest more sales out of them when they've already become your customer. Mm -hmm. If you face competition, <laughs> it's not so clear because the problem is, what if in the process of you know degrading the quality of the older product? you annoy your customers so much that they switch to a competitor. Mm. And that's the question. How competitive is the smartphone market? And, and, you know, reasonable people can disagree about that. You're raising very good questions, questions that a lot of people have thought about at home, I'm sure, but also provocative questions. Have you gotten any response from Apple about this? I called them before the piece ran, and they declined to comment. Which so. is kind of <laughs> par for the course with them. They don't, often don't comment. Yes, on I mean, they're... Right? This is the other issue. It's, it's hard with any company when they're doing things that kind of smack of planned obsolescence to figure out what's going on. Apple is particularly secretive. Um, you know, Is planned obsolescence a technical term? I, when I read that I in your piece, it. I was kind yeah, of Yeah, actually, by. so it dates back to the Great Depression. Um, at least that's the first known use of it. And the idea was that, uh, you know, nobody was spending money during the Great Depression. And there's this guy who I think was a real estate broker at the time who said, you know, the way to get people to spend more money to buy more stuff is to basically put an expiration date on everything they own. Mm -hmm. You know that chair you're sitting in? Mm -hmm. Can't use it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You have to buy a new one. So the idea was, and it was... Disposable it was, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right? That if, you, if you set expiration dates on things artificially, people have to buy more stuff and that will, you know, stimulate know, the though. economy. I don't know. I know about planned obsolescence, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm sitting here as a lawyer and I'm hearing what you're saying. I've been using the word allegation. Uh -huh. All morning, <laughs> suggestion without proof, and I don't hear the proof. I feel that you are fueling these paranoias we have. If you had <laughs> cited the change in the shape of the charging port, you would have had me. Why do they right. change the shape? It's only to sell oh, you no, all new have. stuff. But okay. I don't know that it makes sense that, you know, as your phone gets older, like your blender, like mm -hmm. your car, things start to not perform the way they did anymore, and the innovations oh, me, may be more you. powerful. <laughs> yeah, like my knees, you know, this happens. So couldn't it just be that, that things yeah. get better, faster, more powerful, and as we innovate, the older things don't keep up? Yeah, I mean, that that's certainly true, and I'm sure Apple will say, look, you know, things, innovations come on the scene, and, and people want new things. But on the other hand, consumers don't necessarily know when they buy the iPhone 4S that two years from now, not only will it, you know, not be as cool as whatever new product comes out, in this case the, the 5S, I guess, or the 5C, mm -hmm. um, but it will be, like, unusable, <laughs> which is what the problem was for me. Distant companions, but they always get dumped. In the U.S., where cell phones are cheap, they're replaced faster than anywhere else in the world. But imagine if you could buy one phone that's, in the words of one inventor, worth keeping. What if it's modular that we could just upgrade when something breaks because it's usually only one component that's broken or two, so we just have to replace only those components and not the entire phone? Dutch designer Dave Huckins came up with phone blocks out of frustration after he was unable to replace a broken part on his camera. In technology, if something breaks, you just throw it away. You don't repair it. His device is made up of replaceable parts of your choosing. I think yeah, like even your grandma could use it. And she just has like a phone and she just decides to put on only speakers, only a big battery and that's it, not, nothing else, for instance. At this point, phone blocks remain just an idea. But Hackens is drumming up support via online amplifying platform Thunderclap, where more than 950,000 people have backed the concept. And Thunderclap is no joke. It recently helped elect Democrat Cory Booker to the US Senate. All right! Yeah, right now I'm asking to support. Uh, so they just uh, show that you would like a phone like this. So the big companies uh, see all their customers want this kind of phone.
Building a prototype is the next step. But critics doubt it will ever get that far, saying mobile phones are as much about fashion as technology. The idea of modulizing a product, any product, isn't exactly new. Um, and when you've got something like a fast-moving industry like smartphones, it's going to be very difficult to actually keep up with the fast-changing trends when you've got basically a, basically a template and you, and you plug things in. Huckins anticipated the critics, but believes his dream will become a reality. A lot of uh, companies who are already working in this field, so right now I'm, I'm confident that we can build this thing. For Out Front, Becky Anderson, CNN, London. Okay, so those videos were pretty cool. They've got some really interesting concepts in them. One is, one school of thought is you intentionally design things to break that keeps the economy moving. The other is that's kind of dishonest. You should design things to last forever. That's better ecologically. Now here's your assignment. Uh, it's going to run the rest of today and tomorrow as well. I want to know your take on it. You're going to be designing a cell phone. Now most everybody you're going to try to design something like this. Think of all the problems you encounter in cell phones. Think of everything, every little detail in here. Um, and I want you to redesign it. It doesn't have to be a square. It doesn't have to be a circle. It can be absolutely anything that you dream up. And you have to address, are you going to design this cell phone with designed obsolescence? Is this going to wear out? Or are you going to design it to last longer? Now take into consideration, are you um, going to, with your design obsolescence, is that going to cause problems with profit? Because remember, as an engineer, you are concerned with profit. Um, or customer satisfaction. Because if design obsolescence, if your phone wears out too quickly, you get angry about that. And you'll never go back to that company. But at the same time, if your phone lasts forever, you might not make that money. So it's a very important consideration. Um, here's your deliverables. I want you to give some sort of drawing of your phone that you're going to make. It has to be either a single point, a two point, or a isometric sketch of the phone that you're going to make. It needs to be drawn in pencil and you need to shade it and color it so that it looks exactly how you're thinking. And remember the sky's the limit. So you got a uh, drawn phone in your engineering notebook. I also want your thoughts on design obsolescence or making it last forever. So I'm looking for three to five sentences on how you are tackling design obsolescence. Will your phone wear out? How long will your phone last? And what parts are going to go bad on your phone first? I want to know that. And then finally, prepare about a two-minute presentation uh, on your phone, on the high points and low points of your phone, and your thoughts about design obsolescence. We are going to report out on these on Monday real quick. And that's about it. I'm going to have a slide right after this that talks about what your deliverables are and what you get in your engineering notebook. And I will see all of you on Monday. Um, stop this video, rewind it, replay it as many times as you need to understand everything and to give a really killer presentation on Monday. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, here's your deliverables. You are going to need a single point, a dual point, or isometric sketch of the phone you want to be a build. It's got to be shaded and colored. You owe me a paragraph outlining your take on design obsolescence. Does it wear out and why? And what parts wear out? You also need to prep for a two-minute presentation on PowerPoint or Prezi regarding your assignment. You're going to report out on Monday.